all just a few days away from the Ulster Under 20 final. I suppose it's been a long process getting the squad together and all the rest of the league games before. The, the form maybe wasn't as good, but it's, it's all about championship football and these are where you want to be. Yep, no, as I said, all along, it's championship football. And, um, you know, last year, the year before, we <laughs> plenty of time with challenge games and whatnot, so we had you know, building till the league. Whereas the year there, you know, it's just impossible to get them games on availability a lot, it's top so it is. And, um, you know, it was, we decided we're going to use the three league games to give last game time, see where they're at, you know. And, um, you know, the date there and the two, two championship games, we've used 24 lads, so we have. And every lad that's came in has played a major part in the, in the games, you know. Um, especially lads coming to the bench have been a, a major impact. And come this weekend again, possibly new faces again as well. So, um, you know, when you have a full panel to pick from at the minute, which this will be our last week and the first time we had it all year with the 34 lads all to pick from. And I say they're all pushing out really, really hard. And uh, it's a great, uh, great uh, day to look forward to. Uh, for the lads, you know. Well, it's great for Toronto football going forward that you have a squad that's got strength and depth. And mm. as you say, two tough championship matches so far. The first day against Armagh needed, needed extra time, and then last weekend again, took to the pin of our collar. So it is important to have fresh legs and, and good players coming off the bench to take you over the league. It is, look, you know, um, there's a desire there from all the lads. We keep telling that to them, so do you know, every week we went out, so we have, there's been a change of the team. You know, there's some lab and pushing them training sessions, you know, like we had a team named the night so it could be for a programme or whatever. Mm -hmm. Come Thursday night there's all lads popped up and that's the scenario it was last year as well too. And the lads see that themselves we're willing to you know, open the doors for them and if they are knocking hard enough so then they're showing what we want, you know, they're going to get a chance so they are, you know. And you know, going into last weekend's semi final Paul, like with all due respect to Anton, everybody probably thought it was going to be a Tyrone Derry game. You know, you know better than anybody about championship football it's all in the day and, and you know, Anthem deserved the beat Derry. Like there was never any uh, chance of taking Anthem lately, and, and they showed last week in Navi that they deserved to be where they were. They did. Look, you go back years ago when, when your old friend McGinn was playing in the went to All Ireland final, and they come up the following year, so it was and took a point, Maggie Gallagher to get a draw, and the right, Casement Park Kiesman, was only yeah. young lads. So you know, Anthem always can raise themselves up to the throne from the Derrys and teams like that. And um, people don't don't. Uh, Take into account there's a guy here, yeah, Hugh McGettigan in Anthem, and Hugh's knocking about there a long time and he's doing a lot, a lot of work, so he is. Mm -hmm. And that particular bunch of lads over the last three years in Anthem have been knocking the door, go down last year as well, run them run them very strongly the year before as well. And I say, you know, that some super footballers, you know, and um, we were taking them for granted, they were serious, serious threats with the world, and our lads know that, and we weren't taking them for granted the weekend. Before the before ball was kicked, you obviously hoping the throne were going to be in the final, and no doubt. Looking at far, you knew that Donegal were probably going to be the side to beat them on the other side, and that's, that, that's the draw, and that's the way it's happened. And Donegal is going to be a massive test on Saturday in, in Clunas. A massive test, you know, they did a super run out there, so they again down. Same again, Monaghan, they played the very, very end. Um, you know, a lot of people were chatting over were at it, so they were saying, like, down, we're dominating the game for so long, and then Donegal pushed on. So Donegal hung in there in the game, so they did, you know, the, I think they had two or three good saves for the keeper, so they had and they kept in there and they seen the scene where, where down were taking opportunities and they pushed on and when they get the opportunity they take they're taking it. And say like Donegal are always strong at this level and there's big there's been a pretty strong um rivalry between Throne and Donegal over the last five, six years at the time. Mm -hmm. Fergal and them lads were there yeah. as well, Peter and that, you know, in some cracking games. So you know, it's gonna be a very, very tough game. That's just gonna say that two thousand fifteen when when Throne won the All Ireland they, they had to get you know them and Donegal in the final and, and Celtic Park were very, very close. And I think the following year was semi final again in Celtic Park. Yeah. Uh, Throne came out and top both times. But you know, even going back to the minor days there when you were in charge, you know, Donegal yeah, and yeah. Throne, yeah. close neighbours, right, even close, spilled right, into close. senior level, uh, there's never much between the two. Never teams. much, even as he in the, you know, the league games we played them in the league final in Glen back in, in 015, 016, sorry. Um, you know, it went to the very end and Donegal got a goal at the very end to win the game, but like it was a competitive game for the championship match, so it was, you know. And, um, you know, them things you'd be wary of. Both teams will be thinking the same thing, that they'll both play at the very end. And um, the team that makes the least mistakes is the team could possibly come out on top here, you know. Well, it fair to say, Paul, like while we've got to the final, it, it'll take something better than what we've produced so far to, to get oh, over the line. Certainly, I'll take you over. The lads know it themselves, you know, we don't need to go in here tonight and up to thin session here and give out and tell the lads what's what. They know themselves have to improve, you know. Um, the, the, the conditions are, are, are tough at this time of the year, so they are. But like as then it is, it's who can adopt the best. 
And we know ourselves, we have to improve a hell of a lot from the weekend, so we do till we get over the line, so we do next time around, you know. And, and no injury doubts or problems come in? No, again. no injury doubts. We have everybody, even from last week, we have everybody fully fit. Like Matty Morning was fully fit to go last week, and we decided just to hold a wee bit there with, with the physio to see if he's come along there. There's no, no issues there at all, so it is. There's all lads from Tom Donaghy there, hadn't featured a pilot on the level at all. He's been doing a lot of great work on Finn, he's normal lad. He stepped up really well, spread a good shift last week. So, you know, always somebody pushed him in there. So, so. And that was a few lads probably back from schools football team yep. with Corey Cup. Yep, yep, Cup. yep, yep. A few lads of Cormac Quinn there is back, Tarla Quinn back, so, so you know, full bill of health, the whole thing ripping around to go there and it turns in. So, we have. On behalf of Team Talk, good luck on Saturday, Paul, and we'll see you there. Yeah, see you there. Good morning. Thanks for having me again.